Welcome to a glimpse into The Lucy Show. Are you prepared for a mix of funny, surprising, and even sad details about this classic TV series? Stick around because there's plenty to discover. In 1962, The Lucy Show hit TV screens, drawing in audiences with its humor and charm. Starring Lucille Ball, it followed the adventures of Lucy Carmichael, a single mom, and her best friend Vivian Bagley, played by Vivian Vance. Together, they tackled various funny situations, keeping viewers laughing episode after episode. Now, let me ask you, do you have a fond memory linked to The Lucy Show? Or maybe there's a particular moment that stuck with you. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. So, grab your snacks and get comfy because we're about to journey through laughter, surprises, and perhaps a few tears. Stay tuned for more intriguing insights into The Lucy Show. The Lucy Show, a TV series from 1962, made a big impression on popular culture. People really liked it back then. Lucille Ball was the star, and her funny acting made the show a favorite. It didn't just stop there. Other TV comedies later on were influenced by it, and it showed that women could lead comedy shows too. The Lucy Show did so well that they made other shows based on it. And even today, fans still buy DVDs, books, and stuff related to it. People really love the characters and jokes from the show. The Lucy Show is still important today. It's a big part of TV history, and lots of people still enjoy watching it. The Lucy Show has some interesting stories behind it. While filming, Lucy had two close calls with death. Once, during an episode called Lucy's Italian Movie, she choked on a grape and needed help from the crew. Another time, in Lucy and Vive put in a shower, she was underwater and couldn't breathe until her co-star Vivian Vance saved her just in time. At first, Lucy wasn't happy with Vivian Vance being cast as Ethel because she didn't like how she looked. Their relationship started off rocky, with Lucy even pulling off Vivian's false eyelashes in front of everyone. But they eventually became close. Vivian even stayed with Lucy and her family sometimes like they were family. The Lucy Show was Lucy's comeback after a Broadway show called Wildcat didn't go well in 1961. It showed how determined she was in show business. Despite its challenges, the show created strong friendships and memorable moments. The Lucy Show, which aired in 1962, featured Mary Wicks, a dedicated volunteer during World War II in New York. She contributed her time to the Hospital Committee of the American Theater Wing War Service. Lucille Ball, born to Henry Durrellhead Ball and Desiree Evelyn Deed Hunt, descended mostly from English roots with distant Scottish, Welsh, and Scots-Irish ancestry. Her family history traced back to the earliest settlers in the colonies with deep roots in New York State. One direct ancestor, William Sprague, played a role in founding Charlestown, Massachusetts, alongside his two brothers. Some Sprague relatives served as soldiers in the Revolutionary War, and two became governors of Rhode Island. Contrary to their I Love Lucy personas, Lucio Ball was known for her frugality and real life, while Daisy Arnaz was the spendthrift. In summary, The Lucy Show showcased Mary Wick's wartime dedication and delved into Lucio Ball's diverse ancestry and her real-life financial dynamics with Daisy Arnaz. The Lucy Show, a TV series from 1962, featured a cast with notable backgrounds. Anne Southern, who had been married to Roger Pryor, toured with his band before their divorce in 1942. Charles Lane appeared in seven Oscar Best Picture nominees, including You Can't Take It With You, which won the award. Mary Wicks performed in various productions at the St. Louis Little Theater from 1929 to 1934. These roles showcased her versatility and talent. The Lucy Show's cast brought diverse experiences to the screen, enriching the show's entertainment value. The Lucy Show debuted after Lucio Ball's success in I Love Lucy alongside Daisy Arnaz. Carol Burnett, known for her roles in Once Upon a Mattress adaptations, portrayed Princess Winifred in 1964 and 1972, and later Queen Agravain in a Disney adaptation in 2005. Vivian Vance, who starred alongside Lucio Ball, was honored with a commemorative postage stamp in 2009, depicting a scene from Job Switching. The Lucy Show, a classic television series, featured several notable actors in significant roles. Mary Wicks reprised her famous role of Nurse Preen, also known as Miss Bedpan, in a special TV version of The Man Who Came to Dinner in 1972. Orson Welles took over the role originally played by Monty Woolley. Gail Gordon joined The Lucy Show after replacing Joseph Kearns in Dennis, the menace due to Kearns' sudden passing from a cerebral hemorrhage. 
Gordon seamlessly transitioned into the role of George Wilson's brother, John Wilson. Before The Lucy Show, Lucio Ball starred in the Broadway production Wildcat, which ran from December 16, 1960 to June 3, 1961. Ball portrayed the lead character, Wildcat Jackson, alongside a talented cast that included Keith Andes, Paula Stewart, Edith King, and a young Valerie Harper. The musical, with music by Cy Coleman, lyrics by Carolyn Lee, and a book by N. Richard Nash, told the story of a frontier woman's quest for oil in the American Southwest. Vivian Vance, after marrying publisher John Dodds in 1961, departed Los Angeles for good. The couple resided in various places, including a farmhouse in Stamford, Connecticut, and a 200-year-old schoolhouse in Westchester County, New York, serving as their retreat after Vance's stint on the show. As John's career soared, they lived in a Manhattan penthouse at Beekman Place. Opting out of city life in the late 1960s, they settled in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where they operated a travel agency. After Vance's first battle with cancer in 1974, they sold their business and California property to fund a publishing venture in San Francisco. She spent her remaining days in Belvedere, California, residing in a shingle-style beachside house near her sister. Gail Gordon, recognized for his ability to perform cartwheels well into his senior years, showcased this talent on several episodes of Here's Lucy. Vance made her film debut in the silent film The Patent Leather Pug, now considered lost. The Lucy Show, a television series from the 1960s, featured notable performances from its cast members. Lucy Arnaz received recognition for her role in a They're Playing Our Song at the Amundsen Theater in Los Angeles, California, winning the 1978 Los Angeles Drama Critics Circle Award for Distinguished Performance in a Musical. Mary Wicks, known for her roles in various films, portrayed a bus driving nun in two movie franchises as Sister Clarissa in The Trouble with Angels and its sequel, Where Angels Go Trouble Follows. Additionally, she played Sister Mary Lazarus in Sister Act and its sequel Sister Act 2 Back in the Habit. The Lucy Show also featured episodes themed around The Untouchables, a Dezillu Productions show. One episode titled Lucy the Gun Mall saw Lucy working with Robert Stack to catch a gangster, while another episode, Lucy and the Lost Star, co-starred Joan Crawford and included a fantasy sequence with the Untouchables theme. Interestingly, when Daisy Arnaz was finalizing the Untouchables, he had to persuade Lucy to agree to hiring Walter Winchell as the narrator, despite Lucy holding a grudge due to Winchell's past announcements regarding her alleged communist activities. However, Daisy's insistence that it was a business matter led Lucy to relent. The Lucy Show showcased diverse storylines and talented performances, making it a memorable part of television history. In the early 1960s, The Lucy Show, starring Lucille Ball, became a popular sitcom. Ann Southern, known for her roles in Private Secretary and The Ann Southern Show, joined the cast despite facing weight issues due to hepatitis. She chose black outfits, a style that became her signature on screen. Lucille Ball and husband Daisy Arnaz owned a ranch in Chatsworth, California, named Dezillu. This ranch played a crucial role in their personal and professional lives. Gary Marshall, a writer on the show, later used his experience to create Laverne and Shirley, a sitcom featuring two female friends in slapstick situations. Marshall openly acknowledged how his time on The Lucy Show influenced the dynamics of his later creation. These insights provide a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes world that shaped the show and its impact on television history. During an interview, Joan Crawford commented on her experience working with Lucille Ball, stating, And they call me a bitch Lucy can out-bitch me any day of the week. Vivian Vance divorced Philip Ober in 1959 amid allegations of spousal abuse. Due to the significant wealth amassed during the success of I Love Lucy, Vance was obliged to surrender half of her $160,000 in community property, including her ranch in Cubero, New Mexico, and California home. Lucy's decision to greenlight Star Trek during her tenure on the show proved to be pivotal. Lucy Arnaz, in a recent Emmy TV Legends interview, highlighted this decision as one of Lucy's best choices during her presidency at Dezillu. This decision laid the foundation for Star Trek's immense success, spawning two first-run spin-offs, Star Trek Discovery and Picard, airing over 50 years later. The Lucy Show, which aired in 1962, starred Lucio Ball as Lucy Carmichael. Lucy, known for her superstitions, believed her character's last name, Ricardo, contributed to her success due to the presence of a and R in it. Thus, in this show, her character's last name was Carmichael. 
In Here's Lucy, it became Carter, and in Life with Lucy, it was Barker. Charles Lane, often cast as Lucy's foil, was actually a close friend. He met Lucy when she was a chorus girl, and he worked in RKO musicals. Another notable figure, Mary Wicks, taught comic acting at the American Conservatory Theater in San Francisco. Despite their on-screen dynamics, Lucy and Charles were friends since Lucy's chorus girl days, while Mary Wicks contributed to comedy education in San Francisco. Carol Burnett attended, but did not complete her degree from the UCL as School of Theater, Film, and Television in 1954. The producers of the show approached the Beatles about appearing in a walk-on role, but they declined due to their busy schedule. However, Frankie Avalon did make an appearance, as well as Donny Osmond, who later appeared on the follow-up show, Here's Lucy. Daisy Arnaz Jr.'s marriage to Linda Pearl was brief, lasting from 1980 to 1981, but they remained long-lasting friends. Linda performed her cabaret show at Arnaz's Boulder Theater in Boulder City, with Daisy joining her on stage for a couple of numbers and playing drums for a few others. They also co-starred in a 1998 production of Love Letters. Lucille Ball, famously known for her role in The Lucy Show, married Daisy Arnaz twice with their first ceremony in 1940 at the Byram River Beagle Club. However, due to family beliefs, they wedded again in a church in 1946. Despite facing three miscarriages, they reconciled after Ball filed for divorce in the 1940s. Anne Southern, another prominent figure, befriended Merv Griffin while he was a singer at Pebble Beach Lodge and she a struggling actress at Columbia Pictures. As Southern's film career slowed in the 1950s, she starred in Private Secretary, a successful sitcom, and encouraged Griffin to venture into television, where he found great success. Allegedly, the network dubbed the show Sam's Dick Show. The Lucy Show, which aired in the early 1960s, featured Daisy Arnaz Jr. as a contestant on The Dating Game in 1967, where he lost to Spencer Layton. Despite being widely perceived as abusive by most who worked with her, Lucy had close relationships with Carol Burnett, Gail Gordon, and William Frawley. Carol Burnett acknowledged Lucy's tough side, attributing it to the demands of running the show. Lucy showed favoritism towards Gail Gordon while maintaining a strong bond with Bill Frawley, despite his dislike for Vivian Vance. Interestingly, during the filming of Roman Scandals in 1933, Lucy had her eyebrows shaved off for her role as a slave girl, and they never grew back. Despite the challenges she faced, Lucy left a lasting impact on television history. In 1960, Lucille Ball decided to end her marriage to Daisy Arnaz, who was also her partner in the Lucy Daisy Comedy Hour. This ended their successful television business worth $20 million. After their split, they each kept 25% of the Zillu stock. Lucille Ball got properties in Beverly Hills and Rancho Mirage. Daisy Arnaz chose to live a quieter life and sold his DeZillu shares to Ball for $3 million in 1962. Before becoming well-known for her roles in I Love Lucy and The Lucy Show, Lucille Ball started her career with a short film called Three Little Pigskins, featuring the Three Stooges. Lucille Ball's influence went beyond just TV. She was featured on a postage stamp in 2001 as part of the Legends of Hollywood series. In 2009, she and Vivian Vance, who played Ethel Mertz, appeared on another stamp in the early television memories series. Lucille Ball's journey, marked by divorce, business ventures, and memorable roles, shows how she left a lasting mark on the entertainment industry. The Lucy Show, starring Lucille Ball, emerged after Daisy Arnaz departed, prompting Ball to add an S to her last name. Ball's initial encounter with Arnaz left him unimpressed due to her disheveled appearance. However, upon seeing her later, he marveled at her beauty. And Southern, known for her role as Macy Ravier, joined the show. Southern previously portrayed Macy on Mutual Radio. Ball recounted her first meeting with Arnaz, reminiscing about her attire and makeup. Southern's past role on radio added depth to the show's ensemble. The Lucy Show, despite its challenges, endured as a beloved classic. In 1973, Mary Wicks, known for her role in The Lucy Show, gave a lecture titled The Thought and Feel of Comedy at the College of San Mateo. Another familiar face from the series, Vivian Vance, generously donated her Emmy Awards to the Little Theater in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The lead actress, recognized for her roles in three series, including The Lucy Show, is remembered for her performances in I Love Lucy, The Lucy Show, and Here's Lucy. These actions highlight a lasting influence of the cast beyond the show. 
The Lucy Show, renowned for its humor, aired in the 1960s. Anne Southern, who performed The Last Time I Saw Paris in a Film, was one of its stars. However, there were issues during one season when Lucille Ball's demands caused problems with the director. This led to the director's dismissal. Another director, Jack Donahue, returned for the final season. Mary Wicks, another notable actor, appeared on a local TV show in St. Louis in 1965. Despite the backstage drama, The Lucy Show remains a classic in TV history. Carol Burnett, a much-loved figure in American comedy, stood up against the National Enquirer in 1981 after it wrongly accused her of being drunk and causing trouble in a restaurant in Washington with Henry Kissinger. She sued not only to clear her name, but also to challenge the careless behavior of tabloids. The lawsuit led to a significant decision that emphasized the importance of responsible journalism, especially when talking about famous people. Even though the initial judgment was changed later on, Burnett decided to give the money she got from the settlement to charity, showing that she valued doing what was right over making money. Lucille Ball, another big name in American comedy, had doubts before agreeing to the show that made her famous. A dream visit from Carol Lombard convinced her to take a chance on television. This story shows how past stars can influence the choices of those who come after them and how everyone in the entertainment industry is connected. When Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor appeared on Lucille Ball's show, it became a memorable moment in TV history, though it also had some controversy. Burton openly admitted he didn't like Ball after working with her, saying he felt so strongly that it almost turned violent. This honest confession reveals the sometimes difficult relationships behind the scenes of TV shows, even among famous actors. These stories from the classic TV era give us a glimpse into the challenges faced by famous figures like Carol Burnett and Lucille Ball, both personally and professionally. They dealt with the pressures of fame, creativity, and doing what's right in a way that had a lasting impact on the entertainment world. The Lucy Show, a television series that debuted in the early 1960s, features notable facts that shed light on its behind-the-scenes dynamics. Lucy Arnaz, daughter of the show's star Lucille Ball, faced a pivotal moment in her career. Initially considered for the role of Betty Rizzo in Greece, Arnaz was purportedly dropped from contention after her mother, Lucille Ball, intervened. Ball, the former owner of the studio, Paramount DeZillu, allegedly influenced the decision by asserting her daughter's screen test wasn't necessary. Despite Arnaz's denial, citing conflicting contracts, and lack of solid confirmation, Stalker Channing ultimately took on the role. The show underwent a visual transformation, transitioning from black and white to color in the second season. However, the color episodes were not aired until the fourth season, marking a shift in the series' visual presentation. Behind the scenes, Lucille Ball earned a reputation for being challenging to work with. During an appearance by Joan Blondell on the show, Ball, known for her directness, told Blondell she stunk between takes. In a candid moment, Blondell retorted in front of the audience, delivering a straightforward FKU Lucille Ball. These incidents offer a glimpse into the dynamics that shaped The Lucy Show, from family connections impacting casting decisions to the show's evolution from black and white to color and the candid interactions among the cast. William Frawley, known for his role on My Three Sons, also worked on The Lucy Show. Despite being in the same studio as his co-star Vivian Vance, he maintained a grudge against her and played pranks like throwing movie cans at her. Anne Southern, who appeared in The Lucy Show, later starred alongside her daughter in The Wales of August, portraying a younger version of herself in a prelude scene. At the beginning of Season 5, an animated Jack in the Box with Lucille Ball's head was introduced in the opening sequence, much to Ball's displeasure. However, this sequence was reverted to the previous version featuring kaleidoscopic clips of Lucy after her objection. The Jack in the Box sequence has not been shown in syndication since the 1970s. Encouraged by Busby Berkeley, Lucille Ball got a contract with Samuel Goldwyn despite some initial resistance. Parley Bear, famous for his radio work on Gunsmoke and The Andy Griffith Show, joined the cast in the early 1960s. He added a special charm to the screen, matching Lucy's funny moments with his own style of humor. Similarly, Charles Lane made uncredited appearances on The Donna Reed Show in the late 1950s before becoming part of The Lucy Show. His ability to play different characters added depth to the series, making the interactions between the characters more interesting. All these actors played a big role in the success of the show, making a lasting impact on television history. 
This reflection on their work highlights the ongoing influence of The Lucy Show, showcasing the talents of its cast. Gail Gordon consistently appeared alongside Lucille Ball in various shows, from My Favorite Husband to Here's Lucy. He added his unique charm and funny timing to each role, becoming a crucial part of the cast. Their on-screen connection was clear, drawing audiences in with their funny moments and touching scenes. Mel Torme, with Robert Wells, created the famous The Christmas Song. His smooth voice and great songwriting skills contributed to its long-lasting popularity, making it a beloved classic for generations. Torme was talented in different music styles, leaving a lasting impact on the music industry that people still celebrate today. Mary Wicks and Doris Day acted together in multiple films, creating a captivating duo that entertained audiences with their performances. Wicks, known for her clever humor and memorable characters, added depth and laughter to each role. Meanwhile, Day's bright presence and undeniable talent stood out on the silver screen, earning her fans worldwide. Wicks also made a special appearance on the first season of Day's TV series, showing her versatility as an actress. Their collaboration highlighted their mutual respect and appreciation for each other's work, creating unforgettable moments that still connect with viewers today. These memorable partnerships and collaborations continue to have a special place in entertainment history, reminding us of the timeless magic when talented individuals come together to bring stories to life. The Lucy Show, which aired in the 1960s, featured Vivian Vance, known as the godmother to John Sebastian. She shared a close friendship with John's mother, Jane Sebastian, and frequently mentioned her in episodes of I Love Lucy. In another aspect of her career, Vivian Vance declined a role in a musical offered by producer Vinton Friedley. The role required her to perform a playful striptease, which she felt might typecast her. This decision led to Mary Martin's rise to stardom in the show Leave It To Me, featuring the song My Heart Belongs To Daddy. Lucille Ball, the star of The Lucy Show, had a bungalow office suite east of the main DeZillu production offices. Her cousin, Cleo Morgan, served as her secretary, handling various tasks such as scheduling meetings and liaising with clients and agents. Bud Brooks oversaw the DeZillu Productions' art department. Throughout its run, The Lucy Show showcased the talents of its cast and crew, bringing laughter to audiences across the nation. The Lucy Show, although popular among viewers, garnered mixed opinions from some notable figures. Gossip columnist Liz Smith expressed a dislike for Lucy, stating, I'm sorry I ever met her. Parley Bear, known for his role in the series, had a long-lasting marriage with circus aerialist Ernestine Clark, lasting 54 years until her passing, and they had two daughters together, Kim and Dale. Another television personality, Carol Burnett, considered Jim Neighbors her good luck charm. Neighbors guest starred on the first episode of The Carol Burnett Show, and Burnett continued to invite him back for the first episode of every season. These insights offer a glimpse into the dynamics surrounding the show and its cast. The Lucy Show, known for its humor and charm, had its share of interesting behind-the-scenes details. Charles Lane, who played Mr. Barnstall in the first season, faced challenges with remembering lines leading to his character's exit. Harley Bear, recognized as the voice of Ernie Keebler in Keebler Cookies commercials, also made appearances. Lucille Ball's personal life intersected with the show when her Beverly Hills home was featured in an episode with Richard Widmark as a guest star. In the scene, she hops over a fence to grab a grapefruit from his backyard. These snippets offer a glimpse into the show's production and its ties to the real lives of its stars. In an episode of The Lucy Show, Lucy and Vive find themselves trapped in a shower as it begins to flood. Lucy O'Ball faced a perilous moment during filming when she was momentarily stuck underwater and couldn't rise to the surface. Vive, played by Vivian Vance, came to her rescue, hoisting her up, thereby saving Ball's life. This intense moment was included in the episode as it aired. Lucille Ball played a pivotal role in launching the film-producing career of David Winters, who starred in West Side Story. His first producer role was co-producing and choreographing Ball's television special Lucy in London. Daisy Arnaz Jr., known for his role in The Lucy Show, displayed musical talent at a young age. At 12 years old, he became the drummer for the hit rock act Dino, Daisy, and Billy. 
The band, featuring Dean Paul Martin and Billy Hinch, achieved a top 40 hit in 1965 with I'm a Fool on Frank Sinatra's Reprise Records label, distributed by Warner Brothers Records. The Lucy Show, which aired in the 1960s, featured Paula Stewart, who portrayed Lucy's little sister in the Broadway show Wildcat. Their collaboration sparked a lasting friendship, with Stewart even penning a book about her experiences with Lucy. Initially, Lucille Ball was offered a role in The Greatest Show on Earth, but had to decline due to pregnancy. Gail Gordon, a cast member of the show, had notable appearances alongside comedy icons. He acted alongside Lou Costello in his final film, The 30-Foot Bride of Candy Rock, and later appeared in Lucille Ball's last TV episode of Life with Lucy. Despite these connections, both Ball and Gordon faced tragic endings. Lou Costello passed away from a heart attack after their collaboration, and Lucio Ball succumbed to an acute aortic aneurysm three years after the conclusion of Life with Lucy. Adapted from Irene Campen's engaging story, Life Without George, this fun sitcom features Carol Burnett, who wears the fabulous designs of famous fashion designer Bob Mackey, the creative mind behind the amazing outfits on The Carol Burnett Show. On the busy set, the cast enjoys a funny tradition of eating applesauce instead of oatmeal, which has lasted through the years. The chemistry among the actors is clear, with each bringing something special to their roles. Burnett, with her funny jokes and great acting, really makes the show special. Mackie's fantastic costumes, dressing Burnett like works of art, make the show even more enjoyable to watch. As the actors get into the story created by Campen, the set becomes a lively place where they have fun and work well together. The choice of applesauce might seem strange, but it adds to the show's unique charm that fans of all ages love. In this entertaining story, there's lots of laughter and heartwarming moments. Each episode is a journey that leaves a lasting impression, showing the magic of TV storytelling. This show is all about human connections and laughter, making it a memorable experience for viewers and it's all brought to life by the talented cast in this funny world. The Lucy Show, starring Lucille Ball, was really important in TV history. Ball's decision to approve Star Trek, despite warnings it could make the company broke, ended up being a big success. Mary Wicks, another important person, went to different schools before studying English literature and political science at Washington University. Wicks also acted with Grace Kelly in The Torchbearers, she got an honorary doctorate from Washington University and a master's degree from UCLA for her achievements. Overall, The Lucy Show made a big impact on entertainment, showing off Ball and Wick's talents. The Lucy Show launched in response to the cancellation of several DeZillu Productions sitcoms in 1961 and 1962 served as Lucille Ball's television comeback. Despite Lucy receiving criticism for mistreating her co-stars, it's important to note Daisy Arnaz's tough demeanor as well. Rob Reiner's experience during rehearsals for another DeZillu sitcom, where Daisy reacted strongly to improvisation, highlights this aspect. In 2003, Lucy Arnaz visited the Ogunquit Playhouse, sharing her documentary about her parents' private lives. This insight adds depth to understanding the dynamics behind the Lucy Show's production. The Lucy Show, a popular TV series in the early 1960s, had some well-known personalities who made a significant impact both on and off the screen. Carol Burnett, a familiar face in the entertainment industry, had an interesting experience at the Warner Theater in her early days. She worked as an usherette, but got fired when she enthusiastically suggested latecomers watch Alfred Hitchcock's Strangers on a Train. Despite her later fame, she made sure her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame was placed outside the same theater that let her go. Vivian Vance, another important part of the show, left after the third season. The reason was simple commuting from Connecticut became too difficult, especially as she wanted to spend more time with her husband. Her departure left a noticeable gap in the series. Mary Wicks, known for her unique presence, shared the stage with famous actors in different productions. In 1974, she played a role in Juno and the Paycock alongside Jack Lemmon, Walter Matthau, and Maureen Stapleton, showcasing her versatility. She also served as Stapleton's understudy, highlighting her adaptability in the world of theater. These behind-the-scenes stories give us a glimpse into the lives of those who contributed to the Lucy Show's success, adding diversity and talent to its story. In 1962, The Lucy Show, starring Lucille Ball, hit TV screens. Ball, a famous actress, had her movies dubbed in Italy by Lydia Simonski or Wanda Tetney. 
notably in the long, long trailer, Ball's comedic talent Sean. Jerry Hosner, who appeared on both I Love Lucy and The Lucy Show, had a mixed experience on the former. Despite not recalling his days on I Love Lucy as particularly happy, he acknowledged the practical aspect of making a living. Hosner portrayed Ricky Ricardo's agent on numerous episodes. However, the addition of Landlord's Fred and Ethel Mertz changed the show's dynamics and Hosner's character became recurring. He also voiced Baby Snooks's little brother on Fanny Bryce's radio show, including off-camera voicing of Little Ricky as an infant. Hosner's memories of Ball were not overly fond. While acknowledging her talent and relentless work ethic, he described her as often wrapped up in her own world. Daisy Arnaz, the executive producer, received fewer compliments, with Hosner recalling him as a boozer with an abusive temper. Despite their differences, Hosner's prediction about being on the show longer than Arna's held true, as he later appeared in a different series alongside Ball. Ball's personal interest in backgammon and her lighthearted pastime of spying on neighbors in her later days add a personal touch to her life beyond the screen. The global reruns of I Love Lucy might be a constant, but actors like Hosner didn't receive residuals during that time, reflecting a different era in the television industry. In conclusion, The Lucy Show and its precursor, I Love Lucy, left a memorable legacy on television history showcasing Ball's talent and the challenges faced by supporting actors like Hosner. The series, though not without its complexities, remains a significant part of TV history.